Now, to end this podcast off on a lighter note, I recently took a family vacation to Dominican Republic. And it was a little scary for me because it's the first time we were taking the kids outside of the country. It's definitely the longest plane ride. We've done, you know, a couple smaller trips that were like an hour, not even like within the country, like when we went to South Carolina, stuff like that. It was the first time out of the country and a longer plane ride with a four-year-old and a two-year-old, which by the way, both got sick again. And I've learned, or I'm beginning to learn that that seems to be par to the, for the course when it comes to traveling with children. <laughs> and my aunts were kind of like poking fun in DR and saying that when I was a kid and I used to go with, with, my, with my parents and my brother to DR when I was little that I was like always sick and getting sick and shit like that. So I guess that's my, uh, my karma, I guess. But aside from that, we had a dope vacation and I had a chance to unwind. It was a busy vacation in that, you know, me being the, the planner that I am, pretty much every day we had like something planned to do or like days planned not to do shit, really. But me being me, even those days I planned. But um, we flew into Santiago, which is where my father-in-law lives. And it was really fun for the kids because it's a house on this big land and they're able to like just run around and play with the rocks and grass and they see cows on one side roosters on another side and just shit that they're not gonna see here in new york right unless they go to like a zoo or something but um we flew in there on a saturday and then on monday we went to harabacoa which is a near nearby town or city or province i'm not sure what the exact technical breakdown is but uh we went to harabacoa right and we stayed at a uh, friend's Airbnb that we rented for a couple of days. And that was cool because I hadn't been to Harabakoa since I was a, a little kid. And I remember my my dad took my mom, me and my brother there when we were little. And it was to surprise my mom because that's where they had their honeymoon. And they, you know, we went while in DR. We took a trip, just us four over there. And it was pretty cool because we got like two different rooms and me and my brother were still little you know i was like little little probably like six or seven or something like that and my brother was probably like 10 or 11 or 12 <laughs> and like we were in one room they were in another but uh, that's my memory of like how do i go when i was little and i hadn't been back since and it's like developed more it's definitely more more touristy now we got to go to a couple of dope restaurants one of them was parador corazon de jesu which is cool and how do i go is like in a like in a mount, not mountain, because it's not really like mountains in the art, but, but it's like a como en una loma, and it's like high, higher up, like more elevated than the rest of the art. And we went to that restaurant, which is known for its ribs um, that they they cook uh, leña style, which is like over like wood fire. For my Hispanically impaired listeners out there, and I also got to visit some family there, um, a cousin of my mother's first cousin of my mother's which is a priest he is not well he's like in a medical type facility now but um there in Harako I got to visit him and it was great to see him because I remember when we were little he used to come um he was a priest that like traveled and I have no idea how that works like within the priesthood if you have to be like an ill priest or or what but he was like in demand he would come um to give sermons and like bless a sacrament and saint elizabeth and i remember when i was a kid like nobody likes church right especially when you're a kid let me take that back (laughs) maybe some of you like church but i definitely didn't when i was little and you know we would go on sundays sometimes and just like fall asleep and shit but when he would come and give sermons like i remember like listening and liking it and laughing and he like made it a good time you know what i mean he gave you like sugar with the medicine if you will and he went to Germany and to Italy and like all, all around the world. Um, and I remember like hanging out with him a bit because he would stay with us when he would come to New York. And it was definitely cool to see him again. It, it had been a long time. Um, and we also went in Harabacoa to another restaurant that was really dope called La Jamaca de Dios, which is which the translation is uh, God's Hammock. And that shit is like really high up. It's like a super high point within Harabacoa, probably like one of the highest. And the mountain just like overlooks 
the entire town. So you're like really high up. So it's like scary driving up and even driving down, but um, not too bad. It was like really dope views and the food was great. And you just like paying for the scenery basically in a place like that, right? Then what else? Then we went back to Santiago after that. And the next day I went to Moca and visited a bunch of family there. So my, my dad's family from Moca. My mom's family is from Bonao and mainly live in Santo Domingo now. But uh, went to Moca, then went back to Santiago. And then from there, like a day or two later, went to Santo Domingo, where we stayed in La Zona Colonial, which is like the historic, colonially historic town where everything is very quaint and maintained in its ori- original like facades, you know, like all the, the buildings externally like similar to here in new york you have like some historic districts where you you like can't change the facade of a building but the inside could be updated and stuff um you have a lot of that there in that area it's a very touristy like area i hadn't stayed stayed there before you usually like stay with family and stuff like that or or like a resort so it was my first time staying there and seeing that which is pretty cool and while in santo domingo then i got to see the bulk of the family on my mom's side, which is where we would always stay uh, growing up. When we would visit the R, we would like fly into Santo Domingo and stay with family there. So it was really cool to see a bunch of my cousins and like some of the neighbors from my grandparents' house that like still live in the the area, all my like aunts and uncles, the ones that are still alive. Um, Speaking of which, I also visited the cemetery over there with my grandparents on my mom's side and a couple of my aunts and uncles. I have passed where they are and pretty much got to do everything that we set out to do on the trip, which was a plus for me because you all know I get off on that stuff, right? Like checking things off of my to-do list. And then we went back to, drove back to Santiago after that and celebrated my wife's birthday with her pops, uh, which was cool. Went to a really nice restaurant in Santiago. The name, I forget it though. El Tablón, there you go, in Santiago. And it was really good. And I know she was really happy and able to spend her birthday with her dad, who, again, lives in DR, so we don't see get to see him as often. And the kids, again, you know, even though, you know, they were sick for, for a part of the trip, they, you know, still had a blast and and probably had, like, the most fun out of everybody. So it's definitely a big plus. Something that I like, too, about a trip, like the one we just took, which is, you know, not like the traditional go to a resort within a country and you kind of sort of just get like a resort type of experience and not like an actual experience of the country, which I get for folks that aren't like native to, to a country like, like, you know, or that has like family or friends or relatives or whatever within a country like we have in DR. But you get m- such a richer experience and exposure to the actual culture of a country when you're not in a resort. You know what I mean? Because, like, let's face it, a resort is not what a country is. You know what I mean? Honestly, you take me to a resort in in Punta Cana, you take me to a resort in somewhere in Mexico, in Costa Rica, and fucking the Jersey Shore or some shit, it's literally all the same thing. I wouldn't know the difference. Like, maybe the, the beach water is, like, cleaner or nicer in certain areas, but aside from that, the overall experience is very similar. But what I like about this recent trip is one, just driving. Like I think you get to experience a lot of, of a country when, when you drive within it, um, especially, you know, several hours like like I did during this trip. You know, I drove myself from Santiago to Jarabacoa, from Jarabacoa back to Santiago. Uh, I drove to Moca, to La Vega, to Santo Domingo, back to Santiago. Those are like the shortest drive there is like half hour 45 minutes each one like to was like an hour plus to santo domingo was two plus hours etc and you get to take in the country that way you know stopping like rest stops or like just like gasoline stations along the way and stuff like that and just like the scenic stimulation that you get from it and also just doing everyday things with with folks like you're in the house in the town where folks are busy with their with their lives with the ongoings of their everyday life and going to work and coming from work and stopping by to visit and you know you're going to the supermarket 
which we did several times, especially in Santiago, going to restaurants with the locals, etc. You get a again a much richer experience than you do from a typical resort like vacation, which has its perks too, especially in terms of like R and R, right? Like rest and, and restoration relaxation and restoration i never know what those two r's are but pretty much relaxing and vegging out and shit that's like its own type of vacation but that's definitely a plus and something that i appreciate from this previous trip to dr and i highly recommend that version of travel even if you want to sprinkle in a resort stay in the beginning or at the end of it for a a few days but try to get some of that real world first-hand experience whenever you can And then we flew back to New York and back to reality. Oh, wait, one uh, another dope restaurant that we went to was El Buche Perico, which was in Santo Domingo in La Zona Colonial. And a cousin of mine uh, met up with us there. So that was good to be able to to see him and chop it up a bit. And that restaurant, my brother told me about it because he had recently gone to DR. It's like on uh, ancient Mayan or Incan or Aztec I don't know ancient Native American ruins I don't remember which are native to DR but parts of the floor are like made of glass and you can like like reinforced glass you can see down and underneath it's like the their old like caves and ruins and such there's like a lot of like greenery and trees and plants like throughout the, the restaurant and it's pretty cool pretty cool vibe and the food there was off the hook. I think that that was some of the best food I think that we had throughout the trip. Aside from, of course, all the like home cooked meals and stuff like that, because you can't beat that. And yeah, all in all, a uh, very dope, successful vacation. It was a good idea to disconnect for a bit, right? 